or for ourselves. So there is one very important balance. If the thing that we are doing is too easy, we lost interest. Just like this boy, uh, uh, get, uh, the teacher is picking up. I know already. I know when things are too easy. Have you seen even animals? When a cat is chasing a mouse and the mouse is too young and not running enough, the cat is like, mm. <laughs> and, so the cat even loses the interest, isn't it? The same happened to us. If sometimes we underestimate our students, you need to be very sharp. This is the difficult thing. We need to be very sharp on how to know the ability and where, try to guess as much empathy that we can have to guess where the peace person is so we can give something that is not too easy. If we give too easy, the child or ourselves in our Dhamma practice, if we are practicing the same, how many people come to monks and say, Bante, I'm stuck in my practice. How long have you been practicing? 25 years doing what? Rising and falling. Man, it's time to move to something. That, that tool already gave you what you needed. It was perfect as you were a beginner. But do you consider still beginner after 20 years? It is not the same. My dear family, this is very dangerous. We monks hear stories of people wasting themselves sincerely doing something that was achieved many years ago. That is very sad. And this can be happening to us in many areas of our lives. So we need, that's why the Buddha says, we need to have clarity of mind and wisdom to lead. So with kids, you know, the, the, when it is too easy, even to ourselves, no interest. And if it is too hard or complicated, which is the pandemic, intellectual pandemic that I would say we have in Malaysia, Everybody says, oh no, the Dhamma is very difficult, the Dhamma is very difficult. What happens? The same happens. We get overwhelmed and this is what happens. No, I cannot do this. I'm not good for meditation. The Dhamma is not for me. Thank you very much. How many of your students have, have tell you that? Oh no, this is too difficult, Bante. So we go now to the other extreme. So now the sweet spot, my dear family, the most important thing will be how on this maze of information, yes, nature is complex, how to find the right balance <laughs> to keep things simple enough to understand and feel inspired to do and difficult enough, as we were saying in the gamification, to keep you eager. Oh, I have this challenge. I want to, I want to explore what are the kandas. Do I have a body? Yes, I have a body. Do I have perception? Yes. Well, how many? Visual, yes. Can I hear? Yes, I can hear etc etc something that keeps us interested and moving forward so it is my dear family and my dear brothers and sisters really as teachers and educators facilitators as artists we need to know this measure very well first in ourselves how much when is too much when is too little and as the buddhas the buddha knew very well ne? the buddha always spoke about the middle way he always said, Majima Patipada, the middle path, the middle path. And when you look at the factors of enlightenment, isn't it? Sati, put, a, put Sati in the beginning. I, I, personally, I don't like to put Sati at the first. I like to put it in the middle. So you have three active ingredients and three passive ingredients. So it is Sati, the ones who knows, okay, the mind is getting too agitated. Okay, okay, call it Pasadi, Pases, calm down, tranquility, concentration, and equanimity. Okay, the mind is getting to, hmm, okay, no, 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 wake up, wake up, okay, uh, effort, investigation, joy. I just said a word, a very important, joy, ne? The Buddha put it in the seven factors of, seven factors of enlightenment. Joy there, joy, ne? Happiness, piti sukha, and this is where we are going. Okay, so we want to have this balance for ourselves. And then if we don't know it in, how can we offer to somebody else? Also for our children as you prepare classes. And here we come to one big, I say big problem that we are all facing. And here in Asia is unfair for the children. We are pressing the kids to such extent, they go to school and I'm sorry, ne? it's not a criticism, but it's something we need to take care. We go, the children go to the school, stay the whole day, and what they do after they go, they go for tuition, and they have violin, and they have piano. I'm not against for the kids to go, but when are they going to have time to be kids? So, 
I have seen, I can tell you one time in Macau, I saw one of the most heartbreaking scenes, and it was a young girl, maybe she was, I would say, uh, 11 years, almost 12-ish, like a, and she was in the bus, I was coming in the bus, and she was in the last, and she was like this, totally like this, and the backpack, you could see the backpack filled of fools, and she was destroyed. She was totally, she didn't recall, she didn't show me. I was just standing there, and I just was looking at her with the heart broken. What are we doing to our kids? And then Saturday, what do they do? And then Sunday, Dama school. So, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, ne? sorry. So, if in the Dama school we have the same mentality, we already were taught in that way. If we have the same mentality of army, <laughs> Imagine what we're doing when, and this is accumulated, my dear family, this is showing up in the rage of suicide. It's growing and each time it's coming down and more in age. Before was elder kids, now starting to come. I think we need to do so. We are burning our kids. They are not machines. We are humans, not machines. When are we going to allow hope to develop, love to develop, compassion to develop, wisdom, wonder, joy? We are not giving space, my dear family, and this is worrisome because the problems of mental health will just increase. And if you have people not stable mentally and leading the world, you can see where, where are we all heading as we get older, ne? because we will just follow orders from, from now in a few years. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> we will just be following whatever decisions the young take. And this is what we are doing now. It is very sad. And there is a deficit. There is a, now when, when my father was a child, when my grandparents were child, to learn to know how to read and write was already the, the boss of the town. Then my parents was to finish the primary. For me, I could get a job finishing, finishing junior high. And if I, as I did, went to, to high school, wow, you were already, you could get anything. Then it became a, a, a university. And now how are we? Master degrees? How many masters? You have three master's degree and one PhD. No, I cannot find job. Do you see the, the inflation? We have like, a, it's happening, same that happens with the money. Now, uh, forget about uh, 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 high school or anything. So not even master's degree are working. What are we doing with our kids? They're still human, not machines. And we follow on the trend of the society. Oh, get your precautions, ne? You came to talk with a monk, ne? I have, a, I understand, I have a different set of of, of, uh, of goals and not values because we share the same values, but you understand me, please understand me well. I'm saying it as a human brother. Please see beyond the ropes at this moment, and it really worries me. We are killing our children. I saw them, my own nieces and nephews in Macau. It is, they, they do get some joy, but I do worry everywhere. Is getting, we have a deficit of degrees, and they mean nothing. The question is, are we willing to continue following that path? It's up to us. Or make dignified, open and joyful human beings. I think the Dhamma is designed to do that. And sometimes we practice the Dhamma with the same mentality. I do, I get. I do, I get. That's why so many people get eventually disinterested by it or even depressed. I will recommend you this talk, it's uh, Sir Ken Robinson, he speaks about this, he has been talking about this. Here is the QR code if you want to, or later, we pass you, maybe we find with, with Brother Bobby, maybe there is a group with everyone, or if you want to take a photo and pass to your friends, here it is, I hope you can take it. And uh, this, this is the link to that, or otherwise you just, you just uh, Google that one, it's very famous, a very famous talk. I mean, if you haven't listened, wonderful. He speaks about these things since a long time ago and how we need to revive creativity in our classrooms. So we love to do, we love to learn. Here is another one. This is a newer one and I will recommend you. He's a wonderful, he has the ability to step back and look at the process of learning. Not just delivering information, but how to thrive. 
how to make our children enjoy what they're doing and really grow according to their abilities and likes, capacities. Because we are building the schools sometimes, and you will see, you will see, hear it from him, they look more factories, human factories, than catering for individuals. What do you like? Because we love, we will do best what we love, isn't it? We will do the best, the thing we love, we will do it the best. So I think in our classrooms now as, as teachers, we need to find what do you love? Even from the Dhamma, what area of the Dhamma do you love? You tell me, I have many monk friends, many monk brothers. Believe me, none of us, even we are in the same monastery, have the same likes. Someone likes from the Sutta, one likes this Nikaya, the other one likes the other one, and then the other one was the Vinaya, and the other one likes Abhidhamma. What to do? We have different mental inclinations. We are unique, unique in the universe. We cannot <laughs> do factory teaching, I think. And then it comes to us. If that is what we are doing to others, what do you think we'll do to ourselves? Blindlessly, we are burning way, going way beyond. How much is enough? Even for gain and success. How much is enough to live a fulfilled, happy, stable and wise life? My dear family, we must do this question often and seriously. Because if we are just rushing because of external pressure, do you? Would you? One time I heard a teacher, don't get sad, I don't want to leave you sad today. But anyway, this is something to take a look. One time I heard a teacher say, they, they tell Bante, what do you think they are doing? They were inside the city. <laughs> oh, very painful. Get ready for this one. And Bante say, they are looking for something they never lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very painful, are we? Are you? Looking for what? Looking for something we never lost. Actually, something that is inside, and we are looking it out. And this matches very well with the Buddha's teaching. Sensual pleasure, outward success, and gain. Fame, position, really. Our heart is made of our hearts, ne? and the heart of our children is, is, is a flesh, ne? is meat. Look. And the uh, way, the flow, and search for gain sometimes seems merciless. Are we going to permit it? Are we going to flow just because it's the thing everybody do? My dear family, we need to stand. Gently, we will not fight. We will just stand inside and we have many things to take from. Dignity, we are doing good. We have the Dhamma, we take care of our morality. We stabilize our mind and growing it and we grow in wisdom for what is important. Because remember, just as a, take it as a joke, <laughs> a serious joke. <laughs> but everything we have ever accumulated is just borrowed for a little while. Anyway, so then why to worry? It's just borrowed, enjoy it. It's like when somebody borrows you something, you didn't buy it, ne? <laughs> and I enjoy it, well, for free I enjoy it. How do you feel? Joyful, thank you so much. And then when it is time, you return it. But if, if the other person, can you return me? Ah, no. Yeah, it sounds a little bit, uh, like, well, uh, how they say, cheesy, ne? How come you do not, you will not uh, return what they ask? It's just borrow. The same life will come. So I hope we have this lightness of mind and we do need to take care of us, our children, and everybody. Anyway, needed to be said. And then another way that also the Dhamma, I think, is uh, not being the attitude towards practicing the Dhamma, now specifically on the Dhamma. Something that I see a little bit of a pandemic. Here a lot, and every, here in Asia more, I have to say. Né? Why? Because in, in, in America there is very little Dhamma, actually. <laughs> that was a tricky one. <laughs> here much more, of course, there are much more Buddhists on this side. <laughs> okay, so there are two ways. I have, I, have, I have two options for you. There are two ways to make somebody move. In this case, ourselves or our students. 
There is the first way, which is pushing them. Just push them and call them for effort, 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 and if necessary, get a stick. You remember the story of the four horses that the Buddha gave? There are four kinds of horses, no? One, if you just say sadhu, 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 when he does good, he continues doing good. Another one, if you say sadhu, 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 he, ah, okay, he goes down, down. And then that one, you show the stick, no? Oh, oh. And then he sees the stick, oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I go. And then there is the third kind of horse. You say sadhu, no words. You show the stick, ah, continue eating. And then that one, bush, go, oh. And then he moves. And there is one fourth kind of horse that you say sadhu. You show the stick, you give it a hit, and then he continue eating. And then the Buddha told to the, to the gentleman, the wasatch horse trainer actually, say, and what do you do with that horse? And he said, I kill him. <laughs> and he said, of course, I kill him. Uh, how come I, this horse will not be trained this horse will just be eating my food and all my efforts will not be necessary. I kill him, I make him sausage. No problem. Oh. <laughs> sausage. And then, and then the Buddha says, right, in the same way I teach human beings. And then the man got very frightened. You also kill the, the four kinds of things? And the Buddha very wisely said, no, 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 no. I don't kill him. Samsara takes care. Over and over and over and over again. No, that, that, that was not said but precisely by that. But anyway, that was the point. So the first one, if we know that doing good is good and we just do it, imagine, it is, it is frictionless. Then some people might need a little bit. Yes, I understand. And even ourselves sometimes, and sometimes even somebody might need one. No? So the thing is that we just get the, the, the we are treating everybody like the third horse and it is always stick. And through fear, many times I have seen the Dhamma being taught using fear as a tool to make the people move. I don't think that is respectful. I don't think that is very good because later on, if children hear, they do believe on that thing. And we have a big pandemic also of people worrying about ghosts and where am I going? And people like this. I don't think it's very healthy to be, to be honest and we have a lot. So pushing, 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 what happens? The person that is being pushed will walk as soon as we push. But if parents are pushing the kids, and when the parents, sorry, this is a, everybody adult here, Dhamma people, when the parents die, what's going to do? The kid will continue, the, the, the boy or girl will stop. He will even say, Phew. now there is now nobody to, to push. Now, I offer you another, another situation, another option, and this is the one I believe in wholeheartedly. And it is inspiration. If we manage to make somebody move out of inspiration because that person saw the reason, it's enjoying what it's doing, knows why it is doing it, and is inspired to do so, believe me, my dear family, when we pass away as parents, that child will continue walking. You bet. We can trust because that person already saw the benefit of what he or she is doing. So. Which one do we see more? Which one is more pleasurable? I mean, there is, there, I, I don't see much of a, 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 much of a debate on it. Which one is more pleasurable? Which one is more useful? I do trust and I invest as much energy as necessary onto going onto that one. I will invite you because it does work. People will move and here we go. What do you think? What do you think? Get your thoughts and then when we go to the Q&A, then we see. Okay, moving forward. Another thing, another obstacle that I find on Dhamma teaching, and it came just now in the, in the break, a comment came about it, and I agree. We feel kind of guilty if we have fun with the Dhamma. Actually, somebody came, thank you very much, said, well, I, uh, I have, I, sometimes we don't imagine that you can learn the Dhamma in a fun way. It is something to be very clear, as I said at the beginning, we are not being funny with the Dhamma. We are totally respectful of the teaching. We are just enjoying doing it. And you know, it is not me inventing it, not being like, oh, this monk is very modern. I'm not a modern monk. The Buddha spoke about this when he said, Piti Sukha, how many times joy and happiness he mentioned in so many places. Piti and Sukha are two of the factors of the jhanas. Imagine the factors of the jhana. We have Piti also in the factors of enlightenment. Not just that, then he uh, talks tirelessly about the joy that is generating by practicing the Brahma Viharas. Love, compassion, sympathetic joy and equanimity, the joy that arises from peace even, from being seclusion. So this joy, my dear family, please let's not be guilt, feel guilty about experiencing because joy and happiness 
are not luxuries. They are indispensable spiritual tools we need in order to have the mind open and clear to understand and accept reality we need an open and joyful mind that mind will be able to understand even the deepest of the dukkhas another thing that i see and i better mention it here and that, that since he's staying on video another thing that worries me among dhamma teachers is that there is an over emphasis on the first two noble truths and the other two which is the hope we always talk, oh, there is a lot of suffering, a lot of suffering, and this is the cause of suffering, and you will suffer more, and suffer, 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 one, two, 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 and then you say, hey, well, what did the third, didn't you say it's for noble truth? Yes, actually, it's for third, there are, there are actually four. What does the third noble truth? Suffering can stop, not just worldly, but existentially. Even the suffering of burning, getting old and dying, suffering can be finished forever. I call that noble truth hope, isn't it? Because if there was no possible, then we, I accept, okay, let's all depress and let's like get, uh, how many people, especially in the West that I'm bringing the Dhamma, trying to bring the Dhamma now, they say, oh, Bante, but isn't Buddhism very pessimistic? No, wait, wait till before. So you hear the second, the, uh, the third and the fourth noble truth. And what is the fourth noble truth? The way. If the Buddha just tells us, you are sick about this and leaves, no, but he told us what is the problem and gave us the prescription. If you take these medicines, eight medicines, you will go out of it. So I think is that we should balance and all of us are is responsible for the pessimistic and negative uh, views we have about the Dhamma. And it is normal. If somebody just says, oh, suffering and hell, oh no, I don't want to go, I, I don't feel like going. But there is a lot of things, including the Brahma Viharas, which is the top. This is said to be the sublime abiding, isn't it? It says the sublime abiding for love, the sublime abiding for the freedom fr through wisdom, I think we need to now make a balance and overstress also the joy, why not? And the Buddha spoke about piti and sukha as indispensable for concentration, indispensable for wisdom and liberation. So let's make it fair. What do you, deal? That should, should we make another deal? Deal as Dhamma teachers? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Hi. Done. Let's do this one pinky promise. <laughs> also, <laughs> all of them. Very good. Okay, let's move forward. Now this one I know you will like. <laughs> Self-care for teachers. There will be just a few. My dear family, I am sorry by now. I know it's a lot of information. It's on the video. I knew it. But I'm leaving on Monday and better we keep it here. Uh, in the video later you can take a look so for this I didn't go much into making images just will mention things for your consideration okay everybody okay okay good good I'm glad and then we go to the Q&A so as it says and it is very well said you can pour pour from an empty cup period there is no way if the cup is empty you cannot, you cannot pour onto, onto something as if the pot is empty, you cannot fill any cup. So sometimes, raise your hand, the one who has been, has felt depleted at any moment. Only three, no, I think many of us, for life, for teaching, for many ways, and I feel like sometimes overworking, and I have gotten that instruction for de from dear teachers. Ajahn Brahm, in one interview, we, ha we had a one-to-one, uh, uh, -one, he told me that very seriously. Before I was leaving the door, he turned to me and then he said, I will just tell you something eh, to, for you to keep in mind. Don't overwork. Wow. He said it strongly. Eh? You know him. He said it very strong. And then he looked at me and said, I have seen many monks disrobing because they break themselves. <laughs> Really? So, where are we? How much life is calling for us? We cannot tolerate that in any way. So please see this beyond teaching. Eh? Let's call it life better because we are just family. Okay, now really take out the, the cap of teacher. We are just human brothers and sisters sharing, exploring together. And thank you very much. I'm very happy about it. Mm. Mm.
one. <laughs> so first thing, come back whenever you can during your teaching, during your daily life, use the transitions. There is a talk I recently gave here about, what was the name? How to make your life your retreat. There are many tips and I spoke about this. Go is already the link somewhere there. Uh, it's, it's already explained how we can recover our transitions. So when I was teaching, just going out to drink water was not a moment with the kids. It was a moment to come back, to go and turn off the, the air con or the sound. And I was come back, come back, come back, going to the toilet. Anyway, we go alone. Come back, my dear family, constantly, even in between your class. And if you have a little bit space, two seconds between one activity and the other one, Ana, Pana. Ana, Pana. Show me, Opana. Ana, Pana. Ah, this is a good one. One more time. Ana, Pana. So come back to the body. Kaya. Kaya will never let you down. The body will never let you down if you come back. It's a very good tool. I love it. I mean, not, not love it, you understand me? As a tool. I use it a lot. Thank you, body, very much. It has saved me many times. Just come back. Physical sensation, the weight of your body in the cushion right now, sensation in your hands, and the breath. That's it. I take refuge in the presence of the body. Yes, come back. Remember why you started teaching on the first place. This is a, one time I asked one Bante, elder monk, and I say, Bante, what has kept you for more than 40 years? He had my age in robes. He ordained in the year I born, imagine. And then I say, Bante, could you please share with me what is your secret to become a monk, to, to continue as a monk for so many years? And then he told me, remember constantly what was your orgi original intention to ordain. Very powerful and it really works. So as teachers and as a human being, if we remember why, generally it's a good cause. Rejoice in your kindness because you are doing service to others, unpaid, isn't it? So you are doing service to others and you will replenish yourself. Even when people come and criticize you, remember this and nah, the criticism will just come up. Yes, I know I, still, I have still many things to, to, to improve, but oh, I am also a dignified, generous human being. <laughs> without, you know, without, without this, but really, come back. Okay, remember your why, why you, why you came here in the place. Use the teaching as your own practice, because we are also learning the children's questions are forcing us to think about the topic. Wonderful, thank you, Sifu, Shifu, thank you so much, Shifu. Uh, they are helping us. So it's our, your practice, don't get into the, oh, I am giving something. No, we are getting something. And as we know, it's more receive, it receives more the one who gives than the one who receives, isn't it? Because we are planting a wholesome seed that will give fruit for lives. And what they gain, we don't know what's going to happen with what we said, but for us. Then set the intention. I will use this session before coming into the classroom. I will use this session, this session to grow as a human being. Wow, very diff different, isn't it? Oh, I will be dealing with these kids, oh my goodness. <laughs> ah, or I will grow spiritually in this next session. I will be able to catch the mental negativity outside and in, and I will not fall for it. I will not bite the hook. Then we use that as going for the gym for the body, but for our mind. Very good. Deal? Deal. Very good. Deal? Deal. Yes. <laughs> good one. Next one. Please remember often the benefit for both parties, for your family. For your family, for your community, for the world. I am not joking. <laughs> really, what we are doing matters. We are changing or at least trying to change minds for the better. Imagine, that's, our world needs a little bit of that. Of course, this is what you are doing. Rejoice. And as you go before to bed, remember it. When you wake up, remember it. Write a note and put it, whatever you will see, the benefit you give to others. 
and uh, make that, let's make that our strength. Né? That is a real core. Do it often. I would say every day. What do you think? Yeah. Deal? Deal? Okay, why you do this and why you do all the good that you do? This is our, our core. Hmm. And of course, once you see it, we rejoice. So don't be afraid of joy. Joy is good as long as we do it respectfully. It is good. And it's spiritual joy. It's even better. Kusala joy. Wholesome joy. Okay. Let me see. Should we go this one? Anyway, I just wanted to remember. The Buddha also explained the five in the Anguttara Nikaya five. Uh, in the book of fives, he explained the five characteristics that a teacher, Dhamma teacher, should have. One time he said, oh, Ananda, to be a teacher, is, Dhamma teacher is not, is not easy. Né? So these are the five characteristics that the Buddha kept. So also, while we remember the joy and our benefit, the Buddha said, I will, uh, this is what the te Dhamma teacher, in this case you or me, whenever we are in the position, not all the time, I'm not sitting here, I'm mostly a student way longer time I'm a student than, uh, than sharing the Dhamma so but whenever I'm gonna speak the Dhamma before coming in I will speak step by step one I will explain the sequence of causes and effects look how beautiful how brilliant the Buddha gives us how to teach the Dhamma and I will do it out of compassion for my own freedom of suffering and for the freedom of suffering for the people that I will be talking to look at the beauty not for the purpose of material reward without hurting myself or others. These are the five qualities that the Buddha himself said are necessary for a Dhamma teacher. This is for all of us. Remember them and keep them close. Especially for me, the out of compassion, it's a very important one, even for ourselves. Mm. Okay? If you took photo, good. We go next one and this is the last. Last one, I have received some problems from teachers that they are worried. Maybe this happens to you and it happens to me also. I'm talking about loving kindness, loving kindness, but I cannot forgive yet my ex-friend or my or something. Né? And then I am like, feel like, yes, you should love all human beings equally and like this. And then sometimes you say something that is not very kind. Oh, you shouldn't do musawada, you need to do, do like this. And suddenly some kind of uh, remorse start coming out there. Eh? Because oh, we are talking about something, but I'm not really doing it. It can get very bad. Somebody has experienced something like that in the past. Raise your hand. Even you like do like this, so it is it is quiet. <laughs> né? Or you do you do like this? Né? <laughs> no problem. Okay. Anyway, some of us have experienced, and as a monk, imagine before like like you good. You have five or eight precepts from time to five all the time. But eight, imagine 227. <laughs> So if we are not kind to ourselves, not just kind in order to break the rules or anything, but remember this, my dear family. You, we are teaching the Buddha's teaching. I will not teach you only the things I have understood or, or, or how to say, realized. If I tell you only what I understood or realized, I am cutting it because I haven't finished. You see? I still have to deal with anger sometimes, I still have to deal with desire sometimes, I still have sometimes the, the mind thinks things that are not very loving. And yet, when I speak about loving kindness, I have no doubt. Why? Because I'm just passing what he said. <laughs> so yes, his standard is very pure and very high. So remember this, so please, I want to avoid as much as possible. None of us enter into this because I have seen teachers frozen by not being able to sleep, feeling like a fake, and also monks, because oh, how, am I, how am I talking about loving kindness? I, don't, I haven't forgiven this and that person, and I get angry, and when I get angry, I really feel the hatred. Well, that is your job, to get sati and move away from it. But yes, very nice. Yes, but when I speak about the Buddha, what the Buddha taught, here it is. Feel free, and also it's a very good reminder. Oh, this thing, I, I, I still need some work. I will continue trying. Good. Everything at peace. Another deal? Deal. deal. Okay. Now remember, this is why feel free, even if we are not there yet. Don't compare yourself with nobody. And not just as Dhamma teacher or as um, among associations, because sometimes among associations there is a little bit of ti 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 ti. Hey, I say something like this. We are just a Dhamma family, and that's why I'm so happy here. 
Look, everybody, brothers and sisters, everybody trying to make society better, our world, our children better. No, we are just only one Dhamma family. We live in the same planet, as different as we are. Don't look at the differences. There are way more things in common. We have way more things in common, even we come from different countries. Forget it, way more. So let's not compare with our peers, with another, I mean association. I was not thinking to, to say this, but now that we are all here is good. Other associations, nothing. Just try our best and let's team up. Instead of wasting energy, let's team up together. And I have some plans for that in a little while. Okay, next one. And we are going, going to the good ones. This one I know you will like. Please recharge yourself and whenever you need, take a break. And f don't feel pressure. As a monk, I also feel the pressure. Oh, I am the only monk here. Dhamma talk here. Going here, there. Dana here. Really? Before I used to have s s layman stress. Now I have monk stress. <laughs> really? You want, I will confess you something, my dear family. I work way, way more as a monk than when I was a lay person. I can assure you. Because now I even have two shifts. Morning to night is Asian questions, and night to morning, Latin American questions. In the night, in the, when I go to bed, all the, if I have the, I close it now or whenever, but I start getting the WhatsApp questions from Latin America. I never foresaw, foresee that. So, yes, my dear family, I'm working way more, and that's why I jump around also, and I need to, we need to, all of us need to take care. And I think, as I was saying, society is asking us so much, mercilessly, thoughtfully, the companies are giving the call, not humans anymore, the algorithms, isn't it? Now our computers giving the call of the drum. So before we walk slowly, now the drum, dum, 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 giving the call, and now soon by AI, wait for it. We are still humans. Even if AI, I, I, I love parts of technology, but I also can see that if we don't have a good usage of the tool, we can get cut with the knife also. Yeah? So if we allow the machines to make decisions, here we are. But human mind won't be able to resist. Recharge, please. I know you will like it. Find your way. Know how to say, I am not available from here. Please help me. The next one is that. Don't, this is another taboo we have in all of our cultures, but in Asian culture, my Oh, well, I better not say nothing. <laughs> Somebody, very difficult because of the pride not to ask for help. And this is very strong everywhere. And that will break us. Let's humble ourselves and say, you know, can you please help me with this? I, I, I don't feel well. I need a break. Can I have an ask? No problem. Let's hold our heart. See you some yourself. Look, Siu Sam, Xiao Xin, small heart, small heart, how you take this? I am my, my small heart here. Xiao Xin, Siu Sam, take care of yourself and say, be humble enough to say, I need help. I cannot, there are too many kids. I need another assistant or reduce the thing because otherwise our egos, and you know who is the, the whip? Our own egos. That one is a heavy one. Who is pushing you? I'm sorry to say, your ego. Is your ego your friend? Is uh, our ego, I say your ego, is our ego our friend? Not at all. Really, not at all. Showing face, oh, how can I show that I, am, that I need help? How can I show that I am weak? How can I show my emotions? How can I show that I don't understand? And here we have it. We have the whip inside. Ooh, I have a very big one. And we need to be afraid of it. Really, my dear family, seriously. And then the good ones, he comes. Ask for help and then you go. Share merits every session. Believe me, when I'm going down the stairs after this session, I will be saying, Idame punyang nibana sa pacheo hotu, Idame punyang sabba satanam pajima. May all beings partake of the merits of my good actions. 
please do so. Refill, offer to your family, the people who has passed away. If they listen or not, that is not our business. You are broadcasting your kindness, you are broadcasting your goodwill. So do it often, and we will do it today. Do it now. All the kindness, all the generosity for everybody. Mm, may all of us be free from suffering. I am a decent human being who doesn't harm anybody and is even trying to improve others. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. That's a beautiful one, eh? So we share merits. I think we have everybody grows, not just the kids. It's our practice together. And that's it, the tips. We can make another session and go deeper onto each of one, how to get uh, more techniques. <laughs> okay, my dear family, here they are all, I think. If you wish to take a photo, but I think you were taking. Here it is. <coughs> and lastly, we arrived to the end. We arrived to the end, but I just want to share. There is this video that I made, I think, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 years ago in Burma. And there are only games that adapted for the Dhamma. So as you can see, it's in the monastery. There were some nuns and monks there. And they were working with children. And uh, they, they knew I worked. That was for my work as a layperson. So there are like nine games, I think, adapted for group games for the Dhamma. So you can find it. And here is the link to the video on YouTube. Please make uh, use of it. There are some of them, you see which ones are applied. For example, we have one competition. It's a little bit competition. You can take away that. But uh, we were asking the people, who can say the precepts the fastest? And they're already inspired. Uh, so they were really getting very, and some of them are really fun, really fun. They are group icebreakers, from icebreakers for your first sessions to games that you can be using. And I think the fireball is in and uh, some other ones. These were, as you can see, teenagers. So they, they work. And also, here comes a proposition. I thought, anyway, if all of us, first of all, celebration. Look, I just see the shirts, and it's wonderful to see all the associations together. Let's give a big applause to ourselves. Ah, very good. <laughs> I'm happy. Happy to be together. So let's move. I will propose something to move forward. I find, because I, as monks, as you know, we monks belong to, belong to everyone and belong to no one at the same time. Actually, we only belong to the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. So sometimes we go to this association. I have no problem. There are no problems. So what I'm wanting to propose, I see when I go to one association or another one that everybody is inventing the same thing. Everybody is working in different laboratories about the same thing. Why don't we join at least on teaching kids? Let's do this one. Why don't we join forces? And I already, it's already done, already made one account for Google Drive that is called Dhamma Materials. And I made as, a, as an example, uh, folders. So we can start whatever you feel comfortable. I'm not asking for something you might not feel comfortable. But if you want to share with the community, everybody will have access to this. And it will be not just Malaysia. Wait, I will be able to use, use this in America, in United States, or whatever is English speaking. The whole world can use this, and we have activities, and then start putting activities. We can all have access. I will need, we will need one or two volunteers, and then please, if somebody wish to volunteer, wait, I tell you for what, to start ad, uh, administering, administrator, like, so, you know, how do you select that? administrator, an admin who can start taking and putting, I just made activities, okay, let's put it, uh, books for children, uh, books, Dhamma books for children to teach specially. So we have there, and then we have games, okay, we'll have a, either a list of games, or we will put the, uh, and then music presentations, I will put this presentation for, for there, you can find it there, it will be there, and then syllabus. What is this association putting? What do you start first? Do you start with Budang Sarana, Namotasa Bhagavato? Everybody has a different way, but similar. We can put your programs there, as I see sometimes for free distribution, the books. So we are open. I'm not pushing. If you don't feel comfortable to publish anything, feel free. But what do you think? Do you think it's a good idea? So next time when you need something, it will not just be the materials that you may have either on the internet. Ah, another one I want to put is links. 
There are many links around the world for act with activities for children. Next time you are out of ideas, just open the <laughs> wonderful, just open the folder, get there, oh, I want some games, let's see what books. I have one book, which uh, you might have it, the, the Buddha's Life for Coloring. I use that one and kids love it. And I gave that session like year and a half ago and the drawings are still posted in teams in the world, many of them. And one of the most joyful part is that one, the granny, you know, you know uh, Lei Hun, no? From, from Lei Hun, many of you know Lei Hun. Lei Hun's ma late, gra late mama, she was in the session and she painted one of them and she was totally, and so you could see seven, six year olds and, and she was 80 something, oh, everybody sharing the, the pens, color pencils like this. She passed away and her drawing oh, is still there. And I asked everybody to put their name and their age. I think she was 83 or something like this. So we have, you have six year olds and 83. So well, anyway, planning to put everything there. What do you think, good idea? Yes. So you need something, just come back to there and we all together put in a single place and we will need to be refreshing it because often we can have over overpopulation, overwhelmed. So somebody or a few people who volunteers to kind of sort it out and put the most relevant, we find a way. Well, I don't know how it's gonna take, but I think together, I can see immediately, we can do. Deal, Deal. it's already done, so we do it, okay. Okay, my dear Fanny, finish. Here are the words that we explored. I really wish all of us find a way. Take care of ourselves, take care of our children, take care of our families, and may the Dhamma flourish, Budang Sasanang Chirang Tita too. And I want to finish with one of the crown for our inspiration and knowing what we are doing. The Buddha said in brief, Sabadanang Dhamma Danang Jinati. From all the gifts, the gift of Dhamma is the highest. Be sure of it, because a gift we give for the world will stay and the Dhamma will follow the children we teach for lives until they gain freedom from suffering. Imagine, from all the gifts, the gift of Dhamma is the highest. And again, I want to really from the heart, thank you and congratulate you for your generous and wise choices to learn the Dhamma and to help others learn the Dhamma. Recall it often, make it your strength. As a human brother, thank you very, very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let's use this moment to offer the merits of our kindness to the people who has passed away in our families. We will go later to Q&A if time allows. Yeah, is, is that clock okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We will go to Q&A and as you feel, we see. And, but let's share merits or you want to do later. Now, 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 it's a good moment. Thank you, thank you. Recall all your kindness, all the time you have chosen to go to the Sunday school share with the kids, think about how can I do this, how can I prepare the time that you were talking to the kids, teenagers, your family, or just pondering by yourself, planting seeds of wholesome seeds of generosity, wisdom, loving kindness, compassion for others. Feel joyful about it. And this is what we share for our family members, our mother and father, wherever they may, wherever they may be, if they are alive or not, may they be healthy and with the mind at peace. Thank you very much. We share the fruits of all of that. Your children, if you have grandchildren, may they have a long and safe life. Your brothers and sisters, all your family and friends, may they partake of the merits we have done in the past. Rejoice. May all of them be well. All the people we know and the people we don't know, may they we be at healthy and with the mind at peace. And also the people we have had problems in the past, here there is no malice. 
I'm sorry for my side. Thank you very much for the lesson. May you and all your family be well and all beings, especially those who suffer more than us, we share the merits of all the good actions. And may those good actions be planted well so the fruits continue until final liberation. We are not alone. We walk together as a family and it's a pleasure. And with that being said, let's recite together. Idame nyati nan hotu sukita hontu nyata yom Idam no nyati nan hotu sukita hontu nyata yom Idam wo nyati nan hotu sukita hontu nyata yom Eta wata cham hehi sampadang punya sampadang Sabge sata anumodantu Sabha sampati siddhiya We put our intention so all these good practices lead us to eradicate all the mental impurities that we still carry, all the asavas all the negativity, fears, anxiety, stress, anger, impatience, desire, attachment and obsession ignorance but we all soon be free and please repeat after me idame punyang asawakayang wahang hotu we put our intention so all these good practices of sila samadhi and panya and helping others soon help us and lead us to final liberation the attainment of mental purity the final nibbana and we repeat, Idame punyang Nibbanasa Pachayo Hotu And a big Sadhu 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 Go, my dear family, Sadhu 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 so first, really, my dear family, from my heart, I wish to offer an apology in case something that I said or because I, there were some uh, pressing issues, no? So maybe I, I, I am do passionate about some of the things, for example, what we are doing to the children, but I want to offer an apology. If a word or tone or physical movement or facial expression was not uh, pleasant or of your... Or, 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 or felt I wish that it doesn't generate anything. Put it aside, please. I take responsibility from it. And uh, take the Dhamma, whatever Dhamma and message is there. I really want to leave it clear. I'm sorry if any word or expression was not of uh, pleasant. I take responsibility. And I do, I, do, I do feel some passion about these topics. And I hope also didn't want to criticize. And as I said, I rem remind you again, I, I am very Chinese. 20 years I live here, so not, yeah, 20 years living, and I have a Chinese family, and I have my, it's my family, and I have seen it closely, so there was no intention of criticizing or pinpointing, you know, is it okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm. We keep the Dhamma, and we, we continue. Thank you.